I think the brain is one of these areas that we still understand so little of. And I think when I was younger, I thought, well, this is an area perhaps I can make a contribution to get a better understanding of brain function. And in fact, originally, I was going to do psychiatry because I thought it was very interesting, very challenging. But then I also realized it wasn't necessarily very helpful. And I found neurology to be much more, much uh, easier to follow and I, I and I liked the logic of it and there was still there was still an awful lot to understand so one one of the diseases which uh, in Dublin where I trained was very common one of the conditions was multiple sclerosis and there was actually a laboratory in the hospital in which I worked I remember the sign is a you know MS laboratory and and there was nobody in there and I thought um, that perhaps this was an area that I might be able to make a contribution um, as I got to know more and more about it, I, I realized we actually know very little about multiple sclerosis. So there was huge scope to try and make a really useful contribution, both clinically and uh, through the research. So the, the field of MS has virtually transformed over 20 years, or actually almost 25 years since I've started. Um, I think one of the phrases right at the very beginning people used use was uh, diagnose and adios. So you diagnose a patient with MS and you'd basically say there's not an awful lot we can do, you better get on with living your life as best you can. And it's moved from that untreatable, unmanageable condition to something which we, we now actively manage, the, the patient, the person with MS actively manages, but which we can also treat. So it is no longer untreatable. And we have a, you know, a range of medications um, getting increasingly better over time from in injectable medications and now oral treatments that reduce the frequency of attacks, which I think is you know, a huge benefit to patients. So it, it's a different world. And, and I think people that I diagnose now in my clinic, um, the conversation is very different to that of 20 years ago. And there's, there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of decision making and there's a lot of active management. Well, I thought uh, 20 years ago that, you know, I would, along with my colleagues, solve MS uh, over, over the subsequent two decades. But in fact, although we've made quite a lot of progress over that time, it is still a condition that in which there's a huge number of unanswered questions from the cause to how you best treat it to the mechanisms of disability. So if somebody asked me about uh, going into the field, I would strongly encourage them. It's a very active a dynamic field, it's a very exciting field. I would encourage them to know a little bit, learn a little bit about the condition, know what they were getting themselves I I into. I would like to feel that they were, they were committed. Um, I think it's really important that the patient or the person with MS is the focus of your research, so I'd like to get that feeling. But I suppose the single most important thing if you're going to go into any field is that you identify a mentor, somebody who will really lead you through those early years and shape your career, and that's probably the most important factor. Well, I think I was very lucky when I came into the field that um, magnetic resonance imaging ha had just arrived on the scene in the early 80s. So using MRI and working with the NMR unit here with Ian MacDonald, we were actually able to make some major contribution to our understanding of the condition and to its diagnosis. So I think diagnostic criteria so we can make a earlier and a more secure diagnosis was really important. Understanding mechanisms of disability so we get a sense of what's happening to the patient and hopefully some indication of how we can interfere with that and, and improve them. That's really important. And my own area of rehabilitation which really helped to focus on patient management I think helped and that has evolved over the last 10 or 15 years. I, I hope to the patient's benefit.
Well, I think in, in MS we have now treatments that reduce and even maybe prevent relapses occurring, but one area we haven't been able to tackle is progression and, and this steady, insidious progression that patients uh, often uh, get. So that, to me, is the next big breakthrough. We, we've uh, set up a major international collaborative looking at progressive MS. We need to understand the mechanisms and we need to identify treatments. Th that's going to be challenging because it's all about protecting the central nervous system and repair and that, that these are really big areas. But I'm, I'm confident that with an international effort we'll be able to do this. So I think conquering progression is the, will be the next great breakthrough in multiple sclerosis.